morning, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to Rushmere Baptist Church on this lovely sunny morning. And it's a bit cool at the moment. It might be hot later on, but it's gorgeous just at the moment. It is lovely to see you all. We're really pleased to welcome all our speaker this morning, who is Liz Beaton, and be given, bringing us God's word later on. And we're very grateful to Alistair for stepping up and leading worship this morning because quite a few of our worship team have been affected by COVID. So we remember them this morning as they recover. And we're also pleased to welcome many of the Holiday Club team who are wearing their purple shirts. I, I forgot to wear mine. I didn't get the memo. So I'm sorry I'm not wearing mine and that. But I'm also... I'm also really quite pleased because they're quite hot. You know, so, and, that. Um, and the first part of our service this morning is going to focus on our holiday club. And Beth and Chloe, who led the club, are going to help us to experience some of the activities and some of the worship that we did at holiday club. So we say, thank you, Lord, that we are all here to get together. Thank you for a lovely week at Holiday Club. And Lord, we invite you by your spirit. Come and be with us now as we worship and praise you. Amen. Right. Um, Beth and Chloe. Right. Can I have my two wonderful little sisters that have presented this for you? Um, can I have some help to move that down? Because otherwise no one's going to see anything. There's water. I know there is water. That's all right. We'll manage. There we go. And pop it there. There we go, right. I've got me gunge. Aren't you going to mix it? Oh, no, you're going to be blind. Wait, what? Oh, you're going to shut your eyes, aren't you? I'm not going to just let you go. Oh, yes, we'll grab this. <laughs> right, let's get all the bags out again, like we did at Holiday Club. Can you help me? Yeah. Yeah? So we thought we could start off with the traditional Holiday yeah. Club holiday club experience, which is the, the quiz. Because obviously we, we do the quiz every year without So we thought it might be a good idea to start with that first. There you go. Can you help me get them up, the bags? So bear with me a second. Right, so I'm going to split the um, church in half, which is slightly... Um, we're not biased, are we? Thank you. Um, so... Um, but we seem a bit top-heavy one side with purple shirts. <laughs> and I, d I don't feel that that is necessarily very fair. So I'm going to ask the uh, junior helpers on this side to migrate that side briefly <laughs> to level the playing fields up. Oh, we have some more. Right. So I'm going to ask each half a question. So it's the, the split is between, you still need to go one more, one more. Emily, you need to still go one more. You could have gone over there, people. There we go, that's it. We're just making sure that people have just arrived. Can you see them? Oh, yes, please, 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 please do, please do. That's all right. Yes, you should be absolutely fine. Right, so we're going to have a split in between Sheila and Anne Barnes. So Sheila and Anne Barnes, give us a wave. There we go. So we've got team one, which is Sheila's side. And team two, which is Anne's side. Right, should we try that again? Team one, give me a shout. Right, who can do that slightly better? Team two, can you do it better? Hey. So I'm going to have Noah for team two, so you're going to stand here. And I'm going to have Ava for team one. So team one, your first question. Ava, stand still. There we go. There we go. What gift does Solomon ask God for? What gift does Solomon ask God for? Who is that? Who is that? Wisdom, yes. Can you pick a number between one and ten, please, Jenny? Eight. eight. So going to number eight. If we get a Milky Way, that's good. We get a point. And if we get a black hole, she's going in the gunge. What is it? Let's show everyone. It's black hole, so she's going in the gunge. If she gets a red, 
That means she gets no point, and if she gets a yellow, she gets a point, okay? Are you ready? I expect this side to start sit, chanting yellow because you want a yellow to get a point, uh, and this side red. Ready, steady, go. Oh, unlucky. This is where it gets a bit grim. This slime is very, very... Yeah, keep your hand over. We'll reuse the same hand. Right, team two. In Psalm 8, who does God crown with honour and glory? No, no, no. And you're not going to be answering. You're doing the dunk. You're on the other team. No, in Psalm 8... Who does God crown with honour and glory? It was one of the quiz questions. Shows how much you guys were paying attention in the quiz, wasn't it? I know. Do you want to pass it on to your fellow teammates? Yes, correct. Pick a number. Oh, pick a four. Well done. So Noah going to number four. What is it? Oh, so you're going in the gunge, mate. Which somehow I think you might enjoy. Are you ready? Close your eyes. Oh, what colour is he going to get? I can't hear any cheering. We need the holiday cl club atmosphere. We'll keep going. We'll slow down then. There you go. Oh, oh, you nearly got one. You got one? No. Oh, so it means team two has one point. Team one, you've got to catch up. Right, next question for team one. What does Jesus put on the blind man's eyes to heal them? Lexi. Excellent. Pick a number, Lexi. Three. Oh, it's the Milky Way. So team one has just caught up. Right. No, no, she doesn't need to go in the gunge. Only black holes mean gunge. Right. Team two. What did Jesus mean when he said he was the light of the world? I'm slightly concerned over here. I'm not going to lie. There's, let me count how many leaders I've got over there at the moment. <laughs> Belle, please. Exactly. Thank you very much. You've just restored my hope in that side of the church. Right, pick a number, Belle. Six. So you're yellow, golden, yes. These go out. Well, you're not meant to pick the bag up. Just get what's inside it. What is it? Oh, so it means team two have got a Milky Way, so it means they're on two points. It's all right, I'm used to the gunge by now. Right, team one. Who was the author of Psalm 139? Val, to be fair, you should know this Val because you've taught the stories all week. It was David. Pick a number, Val. One. One. Oh, so we've got two points over here and two points here. It's a tie at the moment. Yes, it is. Right, team two. What ingredients can you put with Coca-Cola? Other brands are available. Um... That causes an, eru an eruption. It was a bit of a debatable eruption at Holiday Club, I would like to add. Right. Izzy. No, no, no. Okay. Mentos. Thank you, Luna. Yeah. What number would you like, Luna? Pick a number. Ten. Go up the way to 10, Noah. 
or unless I've got the wrong team. Did I say it was team one? Am I, am I on the right one? Okay. Oh, so we've got two points over here, three points over here. Who is going to win? We've got a couple more questions. Right, team number one. Name five planets in the solar system. Emily. Emily. Thank you. Pick a number. Seven. Is it a black hole? Are we going in the gunge again? Oh, she's going in the gunge again. Ready? Shut your eyes. I'm letting you go in the middle. Thank you. Go on. Go, go, go. Go. Oh. No, no, no. She's got a yellow. Right. So it... Pardon? No, because you've caked both of them. Right. So we've got three all at the moment. Team two, are you going to bring it up to four? Right. What is the coloured part of our eye? What is it called? Iris, pick a number. Um, I've got two. Two, five, nine. Two. Go into two, Noah. Oh, so four points over here. Three here. You're still on the catch up, team one. Right, team one, name six colours of the rainbow. There is seven in total, so I'm letting you drop one. Oh, people. Fabulous. Thank you very much. Pick a number. You've got either five or nine. Nine? Let's see. Is it? Nine hole wasn't so good this time. It was indeed a black hole. Ready? Go. Oh. What's it going to be? What's it going to be? What's it going to be? Oh, crumbs. It's like she's kneading it. It's yellow. It is for all. Oh, yeah. You do realise, Noah, you are the only child that has managed to get this caked in slime the whole week. And you weren't even here. That is your child. Okay, cool. Right. The finale question. No. Right, we're not discussing that. We're going for the final question. So we've got four points over here, four points over here. Am I going to need a tiebreaker or is this going to win it all? Well, wait, wait, wait. We haven't, we've got to see if they answer this question correctly. Right, so team number two, can you think of a way that we can help to look after our planet? <laughs> Sheila, saving the wildlife. I'm going to ask these two, these two as well. Go on. Don't waste food. Luther? Pick up rubbish. Well done. Thank you. Luther, do you want to pick a number for me just to give you a chance? Oh, there is only one left. So you've got five or five, basically. Five. Good choice. Good choice. Excellent. What's it going to be? Oh, it could still go to a draw. Are you ready, Noah? Shut your eyes in. Is it red or yellow? We can, as we conclude this slime delight, um, we have a winner to Team 2. Congratulations. Right. right, we are now going to sing, hopefully, our theme song for the week, which is Wonder Zone.
We did lots of different songs. We did lots of different activities. Um, we had lots of different zones. We had the arts and craft zone, which Myrna absolutely loved. I don't know if she's here. I can't see her. Ah, there she is. So she did loads of arts and crafts. She got like some messy splatter painting. We also had the experiment zone, which was outside. We did lots of experiments. We had the story zone, which Val was in charge of. Um, and she told some amazing stories. Um, experiments with Mark and Suzanne. I don't know if they're... Uh, there they are. M um, Mark absolutely loved getting covered in Mentos and Coke. Um, and then we also had... What have I forgot already said? Oh, we had games. So we had Chloe and Faith who were on games. They created some amazing games. And then we also had the Wonder Wall upstairs, which the children posted questions. We had some very intense, but also some amazing questions that the children wanted to find out. And then they were put to the leaders on the last day to try and answer them. Some of the questions were, um, why did God bother to make the universe? Yeah. That was one of our top ones. Yeah. Um, lots of very in-depth questions, which the leaders answered wonderfully. Um, so to just give you a little snippet of what we've been up to, there is a short video um, just of some clips and photos of what we've been up to. So yeah, thank you. Yeah, so that was our little video. Not sure what happened to the audio there, but that's probably my fault. Um, so I think we're going to sing another song. Yep. So if I could have my helpers back to do a lovely song. Um, and I know that um, Ava is very keen to show off some dance moves that she's um, been learning over the week. So if you two want to stand on the stage, and then Ava, if you want to, if Hallie wants to do it too, that's absolutely fine. And anyone else, if you want to come and show the actions <laughs> to all the grown-ups, and you want to stand near the front, that's absolutely fine. everyone Please. Yeah. 
be my friend So I can jump and shout Cause God loves me God's love is big, God's love is great God's love is fab and he's my mate God's love surrounds me every day And I love to sing and say God's love is big, God's love is strong God's love goes on and on and on God's love surrounds me every day And I love to sing and say We did have a fabulous week and the children were wonderful. They were really great at taking part in everything and it was a joy to be with them. But I want to say a big thank you to two special people. So Beth and Chloe, come back up. Because these two lovely ladies took on the task of organising our holiday club this year. Quite late on, didn't you? They didn't have a lot of time. They're quite busy people. So we want to say a big thank you to them. We couldn't have done it without you. You're both absolute stars. And we pray that God will give you a bit of a rest now and that he will bless you. Sorry. Now, when I was in school, we learned a special way of saying thank you to people, which is to give them a big hand. So what I would like you to do is if you're anywhere near anybody, if you can see somebody wearing a purple shirt, would you give them a big hand? 
give them a big hand because because they were very vital part of the program as well and we're really grateful for how our teenagers stepped up and led so much of the program they were fabulous and we're also very grateful um, I think it was uh, Jenny and Sheila you coined this new word our teenagers <laughs> our teenagers yes our teenagers are very important people they are senior teenagers they are teenagers in seniors clothing you know and there are many of us many of us in this church and Lots of our teenagers stepped up this week as well, so we are grateful to them. And now, children, we're really glad Susie and others have got lovely things for you to go and do in our Jubilee Hall. So we invite you to go and do some more fun stuff this morning out in the Jubilee Hall. All right, and while you go, I'll attempt to move this letter. <coughs> Right, so after all that excitement, all that activity, that noise, if you like, let's just quieten our hearts, quieten our minds, and come to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you again for Holiday Club, and we ask your blessing on all the children and the families <coughs> who came. <coughs> Lord, they responded so well, the children, to everything at Holiday Club, and they learned lots of things about you. And we pray that those seeds that have been sown will grow in those children. You know, Lord, many are going on holiday now. And we pray that they will have a good time and safe journeys. And that they will enjoy the rest of their summer. And we pray that you will guide them and their parents as they move on to new classes and some of them new schools in September. We thank you for them. And Father, we thank you that you know all about each one of us and that you care for us and understand us. You are always with us and ready to listen. And you answer our prayers, even if sometimes it's an unexpected ways. We trust in your unfailing love. Lord, you have given us this beautiful world. We are sorry that we have not taken care of it as well as we should. And that today millions of people are suffering because of drought, hunger, fires, floods. Please forgive us and show us how we can play our part in protecting your world. Help us not to be wasteful or greedy in how we use the precious resources you have given to us. We thank you that grain is now being released from Ukraine ports. And we ask for your protection over that. And we pray the grain will reach the countries most in need. Lord, in this time of unpredictable, changing climate and weather, would you bless the work of farmers and growers in our country and overseas. Give them energy and wisdom. And enable the work of Tear Fund and other aid agencies and charities as they provide food in places hardest hit by climate and economic problems. Lord, may their work bring hope to people who have lost everything. May they be able to share knowledge and skills to help people find new ways of providing food for themselves. And Lord, we pray for peace in Ukraine and in so many other places in our world. Jesus, Prince of Peace, 
Would you pour out your spirit on troubled places and in troubled minds? We pray for the family of that young man, Archie, who passed away this week. And for all whom we know who are grieving or who are anxious and troubled. Spirit of peace, would you draw alongside them, surround them with your comfort, surround them with your strength. Father God, at Holiday Club we heard the story of Solomon, who asked for the gift of wisdom so that he could be a good king. And so Lord, this morning we lift up those in leadership in our country and around the world politicians, diplomats, business leaders, trade unionists, those in medical and other professions. And Lord, we pray for wisdom for them, for compassion, for interest in and concern for the most poor, the most vulnerable. And for perseverance to build unity in working together for the common good. And for ourselves, Father, we ask you to guide us in all that we do. May we be a blessing to those around us. We lift up Hazel, our minister, and ask you to grant her all that she needs as she prepares for full-time ministry here in September. And as you opened the eyes of the blind man in the Bible story, so that he was able to see Jesus for who he truly was, Jesus, the Son of God, would you open our eyes, our ears, our hearts to hear from you afresh this morning and to be renewed in our spirit and our faith. We bring these prayers in the name of our Saviour, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And now Alistair's going to lead us in worship. morning. A few empty seats. Holiday, COVID, whatever it is. Those of us that are gathered together in an act of corporate worship, it's us together raising our joy before the Lord of who he is, what he is, what he's done for us, and it's, it's expressing to God our love for him, worship, just giving back to God something of what he's given to us, expression of, of, of the life that God has given us in Jesus Christ. So please stand if you're able, if you would like to, as we worship God together.
that is what I love to do. I give you praise, for you are my changing it to we worship you doing it together we worship you almighty God there is none like you we worship you a prince of peace that is what we love to do You are our righteousness. We worship you, Almighty God. There is none like you. you we thank you for who you are for what you are and what you are to us lord help us to enter into the joy of our salvation the joy of knowing you and the joy of giving back to you praise and worship thank you lord for this day thank you for the enthusiasm of those young people we saw this morning thank you lord for the work that you're doing in this church we ask lord that you'll bless us this morning bring us close to yourself close to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Lord, we thank you. We come to you humbly seeking from you this morning. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
The reading is from Ezekiel chapter 47, and it's the river from the temple, verses 1 to 12. The man brought me back to the entrance of the temple, and I saw water coming out from under the threshold of the temple towards the east, for the temple faced east. The water was coming down from under the south side of the temple, south of the altar. Then he brought me out through the north gate and led me round the outside to the outer gate facing east, and the water was flowing from the south side. As the man went eastward with the measuring line in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits and then led me through water that was ankle deep. He measured off another thousand cubits and led me through water that was knee deep. He measured off another thousand and led me through water that was up to the waist. He measured off another thousand, but now it was a river that I could not cross because the water had risen and was deep enough to swim in, a river that no one could cross. He asked me, son of man, do you see this? Then he led me back to the bank of the river. When I arrived there, I saw a great number of trees on each side of the river. He said to me, the water flows towards the eastern region and goes down into the Araba, where it enters the sea. When it empties into the sea, the water there becomes fresh. Swarms of living creatures will live wherever the river flows. There will be large numbers of fish because this water flows there and makes the salt water fresh. So where the river flows, everything will live. Fishermen will stand along the shore from En Gedi to En Eglaim. There will be places for spreading nets. The fish will be of many kinds, like the fish of the great sea, but the swamps and marshes will not become fresh. They will be left <coughs> for salt. Fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river. Their leaves will not wither, nor will their fruit fail. Every month they will bear, because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. Their fruit will serve for food, and their leaves for healing. Amen. God moves in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform, and one way that God moved was to slightly change the direction of the service this morning, because we were going to be talking about um, being children of God. And so I thought, well, we're going to be talking about children of God, let's think about our relationship with God, and let's talk about God being our Heavenly Father. And so we're going to sing a song about um, being fathered by God. And do you know what? Although it's not the, the, um, the subject of this morning's reading, as you heard, there's a lovely song I'd love to have done this morning, which is Take Us to the River, um, which uh, would have really taxed the band, so I decided not to dump that on them this morning. So we are going to sing, O Father of the Fatherless. And you know what? I handed this over to God, said, well, God, you make something of this, because it's not the song that fits with the, the sermon, doesn't fit with the reading, but you know what? We're just going to sing it anyway, and we're going to worship as we do so, and consider about being children of God and having a heavenly Father, and what that really means to us in all of our circumstances. So, a lovely verse here: "When bruised and broken, I draw near." Well, one or two of us have been a bit bruised and broken recently, haven't we? Um, and uh, so, this is uh, how God meets us in our time of need. <laughs> Oh, 
sorry, it's my fault that... No, actually, I'll rephrase that. It's not my fault that the service changed. It's just on Friday, God downloaded something to me different to what I'd been preparing earlier in the week. So I thought, you know, I was probably a little bit justified in messing up the songs. But that was a great song anyway. And it's a wonderful world, and it's a wonderful thing to be here with you. Thank you for inviting me again to be back amongst old friends and see some new faces is just lovely so shall we pray father god thank you that you bring all things together that you are the same yesterday today and forever that your holy spirit is here that you are indeed our father our redeemer our healer our restorer that in jesus we have all things that we could ever possibly need so just take our minds our hearts lord our souls my mouth speak your word through me today that we may be encouraged enlifted enlightened whatever it is lord that you need to speak into our lives in jesus name amen <clears throat> i i love the contexting in the bible i love contexting uh the stories and the happenings and the way the old testament all points to jesus and the new testament which is why I'm starting today from um, Ezekiel 47, which is a passage I absolutely love. Who's familiar with this? Some of you will be very familiar with this. Oh, only Mick. Oh, a few more of you, I'm sure, are familiar with this passage. Ezekiel is one of the big Old Testament prophets. He actually grew up in Jerusalem and was a priest in the temple in Jerusalem before, we are told by those who know such things, being taken into captivity in Babylon where he was called by God to become a prophet. And a lot of what Ezekiel prophesies is in pictures and visions. We may, some of us know about the Valley of the Dry Bones um, or the word about shepherds that he bought, the shepherds of the sheep. But this particular passage I just think is wonderful because it is so full of symbolism. And um, so it's not an actual happening as such. It's a vision that Ezekiel had. And in this vision, really, there are four stages. So I just want to, I know we're sort of going to be a bit pushed for time today because we had lots of wonderful stuff. Thank you. That was really good at the beginning. Um, but just to sort of take a little wander along this river uh, in Ezekiel chapter 47. Thank you for reading that so well. So the first two verses, I don't know if anybody has Bibles in front of them, but I'll quickly read them again as we go through in case you don't. So verse 1 to 2. And this tells us about the source of the river, the source of this water. This man, who is described earlier in Ezekiel as having a face like bronze, brought Ezekiel to the entrance of the temple, sometimes the door of the temple, the threshold of the temple. And I saw, Ezekiel speaking, water coming out from under the threshold of the temple towards the east, for the temple faced east. The water was coming down from under the south side of the temple, south of the altar. He then brought me out through the north gate and led me round outside to the other gate facing east. And the water was flowing to the south, from the south side. Um, the Bible is always very precise, isn't it? Always very detailed in its descriptions. And I think that's quite important, really, because we can skim through these descriptive and detailed bits of the Bible but it's all very important because it shows us the detail of God. And here is the temple in Jerusalem. And the first thing to note is that Jerusalem apparently was the only city in the ancient world that didn't actually, wasn't geographically positioned on a river. And the land around Jerusalem was quite arid, dry and desert-like, a bit like East Anglia at the moment. So this river flowing from the temple that Ezekiel saw would have been both a miracle and actually a great <coughs> blessing to have a river of water flowing like that. So here we are, and the water, we're told, comes out of the threshold, over the threshold, from the Holy of Holies, the tabernacle, the very holy place of God, the dwelling place of God. So this, the source of this river is actually the dwelling place of God himself. So this, that, that I just find all these little bits quite amazing. So there is the source. And then we move in on to verse 3 to 6, where this man, if you remember from the reading, goes along with a measuring line in his hand, 
and he walks about a quarter of a mile measuring off these different depths of water. So first of all, the water is ankle deep and then the water becomes knee deep and then it becomes waist deep and then it becomes too deep. A, a river that no one can actually get across. It's impassable, it's impossible to get across this river. And he says to Ezekiel, do you see this? Now, I've got two girls now grown up now and uh, seven grandchildren, and I've taught for much of my life, the earlier part of my life. And when you really want to impact them with something important, you want them to understand. So you, when you say, do you see it? You're not just wanting that, yes, yeah, of course I see it, when actually they haven't got a clue. You're actually saying, do you really get this? Do you really understand this? Are you taking this in? So that, that question to Ezekiel, I think, is, is quite profound. There's a number of times in the Old Testament, you know, where Jesus says, where God says to the various prophets, what do you see? What do you see, Jeremiah? What do you see, Ezekiel? But now he's saying, do you see this? Keep note of it. Don't forget it, because this is important. So there is this river getting deeper and deeper. And a lot of the theologians and Bible commentators um, suggest that the symbolism of this, one symbolism of this water, is the flowing out of the gospel of Jesus Christ from Jerusalem. Uh, Jesus said it would go out from Jerusalem to Samaria to Judea to all the ends of the earth. So the flowing of the gospel getting deeper and deeper and further and further from the entrance to the temple. So, we then come to the third part of this passage, um, which says in verse 6 to 8, Then he led me back to the bank of the river. When I arrived there, I saw a great number of trees on each side of the river. He said to me, This water flows towards the eastern region and goes down into the Arabah, where it enters the sea. When it empties into the sea, the water there becomes fresh. So Araba was a very low-lying region underneath Jerusalem, and it was very, it, the name means desert or wilderness, so it was very dry, very arid, very, very, uh, you know, which makes me think, I love the verse, I'm just going off on a little tangent here, people who know me know that I go off on tangents everywhere. Um, Psalm 63, the beginning of Psalm 63, where David says, God, oh my God, earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you in a dry and dusty land where there is no water. This was the dry and dusty land where there was no water. And it empties into the, the sea, which is actually the Dead Sea. Now, the Dead Sea um, is full of salt, very salty, and traditionally it was known as a place because nothing could live there. It was a dead sea because there wasn't any life there. But here is, it's actually, I think, also the banks of the Dead Sea, interestingly enough, are, how would I put it? How is it put? The lowest elevated land mass on Earth, 430 metres below sea level. So we're in a very dead place, we're in a very dry place, we're in a very low place. And into this very dead, dry, low place flows the river coming directly from God, which transforms it. It says where the water empties into the sea, it becomes fresh. And when water becomes fresh, there can be life. So that's the first sort of contexting for the other very short passage I want to focus on today, which for us is probably more important. Um, if you have a Bible, flip to John 7. If not, don't worry, because I'll read it. Um, we are flipping forward about five to 600 years. Ezekiel was living about in the... 6th century BC, so that's going to be between 500 and 600 years before Jesus. So here when we come to John 7, verse 37, Jesus is in Jerusalem, the same place where the temple was situated. And the reason Jesus is in Jerusalem is that he has gone up with many other God-fearing Jews to celebrate the feast or festival of tabernacles which is one of the great feasts in the jewish calendar so here is jesus at the feast of tabernacles 
And one of the things that would happen at the Feast of Tabernacles would be that the priest would read Ezekiel 47. He would read this passage that we've just been looking at. And a priest would empty water over the altar. And the water would flow down from the altar in the temple in Jerusalem. And on the seventh day of the feast, which we're told is the greatest, the last day of the feast, Jesus stands up and proclaims in a loud voice, verse 37 of John 7, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from him. By this he meant the spirit whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time the spirit had not been given since Jesus had not been glorified. So Jesus would have known this scripture from Ezekiel, obviously, very well, not just because he was God, but because he would have heard this scripture read all the way through his life at this Feast of Tabernacles. And here he is standing up and actually proclaiming in front of all these Pharisees, Jews, everybody else, that he is God. He is who he is. Come to me. And notice the first invitation, if anyone is thirsty. Now, in a drought, we need to keep hydrated, don't we? Uh, We are thirsty. If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. So there's two invitations there. The first, to come to him, and the second, to drink. Now, some of us can, uh, maybe some of us don't actually know who this Jesus really is yet but for those of us who've known this Jesus for many many years we can come to Jesus but that doesn't automatically mean that we are going to drink because it is possible to come and to ignore the second part of the invitation because the second part of the invitation Jesus goes on to tell us involves the spirit the Holy Spirit which at that time they did not yet have, because Jesus hadn't yet ascended to the Father, but which we do have available to us. And these streams of living water that Jesus says will flow through us and from within us is the Holy Spirit. Now, it's very much that picture that Jesus has grounded within the reading of Ezekiel 47, within this picture of the, the river flowing from the very throne room of God, He is now saying, actually, this river is flowing from me and it is available to you, to us, to each one of us to hydrate us, to flow through us, to bring everything that brings life. So just doing a quick flip back to the last bit of Ezekiel 47. We've seen the transformation of the Dead Sea into the fresh water, the Spirit of God transforms. One of the things it does when Jesus empties his Holy Spirit, when we say yes to his Holy Spirit, one of the things that happens is that Holy Spirit can transform us as the Dead Sea was transformed into fresh water where everything lived. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and life in all its fullness, abundant life. Our situations, our pains, our uncertainties, our fears, our brokenness, all of those things, all of those worries and anxieties we might be carrying can be transformed by Jesus. He brings life and life in all its fullness. And here, back in Ezekiel 47, we see this transformation. Swarms of living creatures will live wherever the river flows. There will be large numbers of fish because... This water flows. Where the river flows, everything will live. Fishermen will stand along the banks. There will be fish of many kinds, like the fish of the Great Sea. That was the Mediterranean. Now, that was actually an impossibility prior to this because the Dead Sea was the Dead Sea and the Mediterranean was full of fish. And here we are, Jesus is saying that this sea that is dead can be transformed into a living sea. 
Fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river, trees where the leaves don't fall like they are doing now, where the fruit doesn't fall off. Our plum tree, we've watered it as much as we are able to with bowls of washing up water, but the plums are just falling in there, hundreds. I don't think there's going to be any left, actually, by the time we get to try and pick them. But in these particular trees where this river flows, that doesn't happen because the fruit will not fail. And not only will it not fail, but it will be there months on months on months on months, just not like once a year, when I usually fill my freezer to the gunnels with plums and there's no room for anything else. And then when it comes to next year, I'm still eating these blimmin' plums and giving them away to everybody I can, I can think of to give them to. But there's an abundance everywhere the river flows. The harvest is going to be abundant. The fruit trees are going to be abundant. And their leaves, it says, are going to be for the healing of the nations. Jesus is the one who came for the healing of the nations. So all the way through this picture, Jesus stands there and we see the embodiment of everything that Ezekiel, not Isaiah, has, well, it's Isaiah too, he prophesied about Jesus, but everything that has been prophesied about this water and its transformation and the possibilities and the new life and the abundance is standing there in Jesus. And he's saying this amazing, incredible thing that this abundance, this life, this everything is available to us. Is that something to get excited about? But we need to grasp it, because it's very easy to not grasp it for any of us, um, or to grasp it and then forget about it, because we all do dry up, don't we? We dry up like the riverbeds, and it happens to everybody. Um, and then it comes to a point where we suddenly realise, hang on a minute, I'm a bit dried up here. I need a few bowls of washing up water. I actually need that water that flows from the throne of God. And all we need to do is we need to come, and we need, need, just need to say, yes, Jesus, turn on the taps. I'm ready, and open our mouths flow through me and he will answer that prayer he will answer that prayer and then it flows from within us we are told so it doesn't just stay in us stuck in us you know getting bigger and bigger and bigger with water retention it flows through us the water continues to be fresh and new flowing through us and flowing out through us so that when we live our lives we live our lives carrying this amazing thing this spirit of wisdom Truth, righteousness, hope, joy, peace, justice, all these things, everything the world needs, we carry in us because Jesus puts it there. I've spent the last week with a number, a number of very, very badly hurting people because there are so many, aren't there, at the moment? People who are uncertain, afraid, going through terrible situations, not knowing what the future brings. And I seem to have had, I started the week thinking, this is a great week. My calendar is really free. Isn't this wonderful? And when that happens, I tend to find it's free for a reason because there are people that God's wanting to bring in, situations that God's wanting to bring in, as well as giving us time to actually come and drink ourselves. Because if our calendar's too full, we don't have time to sit down, do we, and eat. We sort of eat on the go. In the same way, spending that solid time this week in between the hurting people in prayer before God, we drink and we get filled. And when we drink and we get filled, we've then got everything we need to help and nourish and encourage and pray for, and pray with, and listen to, and the wisdom to, what would you say, advise or whatever, in speak into those situations people are bringing to us. But without that, we are withered, and we are speaking out of our own strength, and our own inadequacies, and our own ignorance. We need to come and drink, and we need to come and drink, and we need to come and drink. And having drunk, we need to be available to actually pour that water out, to pour it into other people's lives, to pour it into our communities, to pour it into our workplaces, our families. And we can all do that. It's not reserved for anybody special. It's open and available to all of us. So Jesus is saying, who's thirsty? It's a dry and dusty land. You know, and this is transforming <coughs> water. Wherever the water flows, there will be life. So if you've got situations this week in your own life, people you're dealing with, things you're walking into that we may not even know about yet, 
keep drinking, keep coming, because Jesus has exactly, always, everything that we need. So we don't need to worry about what we're going to say or how we're going to do this, that or the other, because he knows and he'll give us it if we come and if we drink. Okay, I'm going to leave it there today because I think that's enough for us to take on board. Um, But shall we just pray? Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the written word and the way we can so... I get really excited, Lord, reading the Bible and seeing where it all comes from and where it all fits together because it's a living word, it's an active word. But thank you for your spoken word, Lord, your words recorded in the Bible that still speak to us today. Thank you for your spoken word that speaks directly into our hearts, our minds, our lives, our souls. When you challenge us or you encourage us or you redirect us or whatever that word is. Lord, I want to just pray for everyone here today. And I just want us to take a... Can we just sit for a moment or two and just let God... His Holy Spirit, invite him. Yeah, open, turn on the tap, Lord. Let the water get deeper, drink it in. What have you got for me today, Lord? Just bring before him the things that are concerning you, are worrying you, are needing dealing with. Bring them to him and just say, Lord, would you just wash me, fill me, hydrate me? Purify me. Help me to see afresh all that it means to live my life daily in the flow of that river. Immersed in the flow of that river. Deep within, not just paddling, but deep in the river of God. Because, Lord, Our world so desperately needs it. The people we know so desperately need you. Our town of Ipswich, this county of Suffolk, our farmers with their dry and parched land so desperately need the physical rains as we need also your spiritual water. Come, Lord Jesus, and speak and minister. Thank you that we have all we need available to us for anything that we might face this week. But help us to remember this, Lord. As as, uh, the man said to Ezekiel, do you see this? Help us to hold it, Lord, to remember it, to get it, to understand it, to come back to it, to keep coming back to the source again and again and again, not to be dried up like our riverbeds but to be flowing, full of life. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Do please ask for prayer um, from me or someone um, here if anything I've said has touched anything or if there's anything that you need Jesus to be doing in your life. Please do take advantage of that offer to come and drink. Amen. Thank you, Liz. That river, what a fantastic picture of the provision of God for us. And God is sovereign over us in all that we do. In all that this world can throw at us, God is sovereign and he's provided that river. He's provided that flow of the Spirit uh, and it's available for us. So there's a strength through all the, the sorrows of life. And this week, 
kind of touched me, really, that, you know, so many of us have been down with a bit of COVID. Yes, even me, last week, not here. Um, and, you know, other things in the news that have really saddened me this week. And yet, God reigns supreme. We need to remind ourselves of that. And he has provided for us. He's provided a way. He's provided the way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's just so wonderful, isn't it? We're going to sing a song about how God is sovereign over us. Please stand. There is strength within the sorrow There is beauty in our tears And you meet us in our morning With a love that casts our fear You are working in our waiting Sanctifying us when beyond our understanding You're teaching us to trust Your plans are still to prosper You're not forgotten us You're with us in the fire and the flood Faithful forever, perfect in love You are sovereign You are wisdom in our magic Who could understand your ways Reigning high above the heavens Reaching down in endless praise You're the lifter of the lowly Compassionate and kind you surround and you uphold me, and your promises are my delight. Your plans are still to prosper, you've not forgotten us. You're with us in the fire and the flood. Faithful forever, perfect in love, you are so. When the enemy meets for evil, you turn it for our good, you turn it for our good and for your glory. Even in the valley, you are faithful, you're working for our good, you're working for our good and for your glory. Even when the enemy meets for evil, you turn it for our good, you turn it for our good and for your glory. Even in the valley you are faithful, you're working for our good, you're working for our good and for your glory. Your plans are still to prosper, you've not forgotten us, you're with us in the fire and the flood. Faithful forever, perfect in love, you are sovereign over us. Faithful forever, perfect in love, you are sovereign over us. Faithful forever, perfect in love, you are sovereign Fantastic song. That's very special to me, that song. So thank you for choosing that, um, Alistair. Right. Time to go our separate ways for the week.
but together as one in Christ. So may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord turn his face towards us and give us peace. Amen. Thank you so much for being here.